Well, good morning and welcome to St. Mary's Church, where we've joined this morning to record what is our last socially distanced worship before hopefully next week when we're able to gather with some congregation members present. I have got one Marion this morning who's sitting down there so that it doesn't look like I'm just speaking to an empty church and she'll be uh, leading us in some prayers later after Joe has uh, spoken and shared God's word with us. So our reading this morning comes from Romans chapter 8 beginning at verse 12. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation wakes with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for our adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Five. Bodies. Sometimes you feel like you can't live with them. But the question is, what would we be without them? It's clear that to society in general, the physical matters. Beauty treatments, wardrobe overhauls, cosmetic surgery, from body shaming to body idolisation and back again. This world says the body matters. And not just that it matters, but that it should be up there on top of our priority list. To look and feel good in your own skin seems to be one of the holy grails of life, according to society. But is the body, how we look and how we function, that big of a deal if we look with an eternal perspective? Even if we hypothetically reached our dream goals of health and beauty, would we really find deep satisfaction? C.S. Lewis, the Christian writer and theologian, once wrote, If we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. If we did get to that place where we were totally happy with our bodies, no illnesses, no extra pounds, no signs of ageing, if we did get there, would we actually find fulfilment? What we heard in our Romans reading just now would seem to follow this pattern of thinking. We are no longer slaves to our bodies, but rather we are free to live as the children of God. And we are experiencing now the longing for the time when the redemption of our bodies will be made complete. 
Our bodies aren't the only forms of physical matter raised in the reading, though. The rest of creation is part of the picture, too. At present, being found in a futile state of cycles of life and death. Some of this is part of the natural order, and some is added to by human efforts. We see examples of this bondage to decay everywhere we look. See it with fledgling birds picked off by predators, and sorry to any cat lovers. Diseased trees, cancerous cells, parasitic worms, beaches awash with discarded wrappers and disposable face masks. If this was all we saw, it would be enough to condemn creation to ruin. But this is not the final word. The whole created order, every last atom of it, is waiting, longing, groaning. The literal translation of the original text for this eager longing means to stand on tiptoe and strain to see what's ahead. The creation is waiting alongside us for redemption. Not that the physical will be done away with. No, creation, like ourselves, is inherently physical. But rather, creation stands trains towards the time when it will be set free from all that makes the physical seem unbearable. Decay and bondage to this cycle. And what are we hoping for? We are also waiting for the redemption of our physical bodies. Not to do away with them, but to release them from all that makes them sometimes seem unbearable. But it is not simply a matter of physical redemption. The true transformation comes as both a physical redemption and an identity revelation and acceptance of this identity. Again, back to C.S. Lewis. If anyone is familiar with The Horse and His Boy, the third book in his Chronicles of Narnia series, then you will know about the identity revelation at the end of the story. And this is a spoiler alert if you haven't made it that far. Shasta, the humble protagonist and supposedly orphan slave boy, turns out to be the long-lost and much-loved Prince Kor, son of the King of Arkenland and heir to the throne. Yes, Shasta does get some new clothes and a bath to go with his newfound royal status. But it is the revelation of who he is and whose family he belongs to that is the real big reveal moment. Our bodies are caught up in the bondage to decay, but we have the hope and the promise that they will be redeemed as part of the revelation of who we are, or rather, whose we are. And this beautiful broken world, which we call home? Well, that is actually waiting not just alongside us, but for us. Our acceptance of our adoption as children of God is not just for ourselves, but for the whole of creation. To accept that we are beloved children of God, bought from the slavery of death and sin by Jesus' blood. To accept this and to grow towards it is actually taking a step towards the revival of all things physical. So yes, the physical does matter. Our bodies matter because God created, loves and will redeem them. But our bodies are not what our hope is based on or where we find our identity. Our hope is in what we cannot yet see and our identity is in the family of God. Pondering all this, then, I wonder where we are today. 
Perhaps we're feeling much more like a body subject to decay than an adopted child of God. Perhaps we're not at peace with the way we are and what motivates our daily living. Maybe we're hopeful and expectant, looking out for the signs of the new creation budding in amongst the old. The words that come immediately after where our reading ended can help us wherever we find ourselves today. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. So let's take a moment to allow God's Spirit to help us now.
Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks that we are free to come to you with our prayers today. All who are led by the Spirit of God are called the children of God. So we ask that you teach us your ways, that we may walk in your truth, be open to your call, and ready to be your disciples where we live. We pray for your church throughout the world. May we all be ambassadors of your love for all people. We ask for your blessing on all people throughout the world, especially those who suffer persecution for their beliefs. We give thanks for our church here in Barrow and Breen, for the fellowship and love which has continued even through these difficult times. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for areas throughout the world where there is unrest, violence and poverty. Be with those who strive to bring an end to these problems. We long for governments in all countries to work together for the good of all people, so in time all may live in just and free societies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community here in this area and give thanks for all who have continued to work throughout the lockdown period. As the holiday season is now with us, we pray for those who will come to share in the beauty which surrounds us. May all of us learn to respect and care for the environment in which we live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering today in body, mind or spirit, for those who are lonely, unable to leave their homes, for the depressed, those now facing redundancy. May they all know they are loved and supported by you and find comfort and peace in your love. We bring before you also all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, their families, friends, and those who are caring for the sick at home at this time. And in silence, we bring before you those known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all who have lost their lives over the past four months due to the virus and also due to other illnesses. So many families grieving and feeling isolated in their grief as restrictions often stop families coming together. Lord, may they know your love and protection surrounds them and guide us to care where we can, and when unable, to bring them to you in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the will to live in the spirit of Jesus now and always. And as he taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.